Okay, so good to start. Good evening, guys. Good evening to all. So we are here for AZ one not four certification session. This is the second half of the certification session. So as you all know, the code of conduct which you all need to follow, guys. Please note, no one is allowed to take the screenshot of the presentation, which will be shared by the speaker, and no one is allowed to take the screenshot. Then we have uh, Makran sir as a speaker for AZ one not four. Agenda for the session, as we are continuing the second part of it. Then, guys, as I said uh, yesterday, we are providing the exam voucher for AZ one not four at discounted rate, at thirty five percent discounted rate. So make sure you grab this opportunity and get it. Uh, so exam voucher is like the exam voucher actual price is 4800 but we are providing it to you all for 3200 so make sure you get it uh, for more details or if you want to connect with me for this discounted exam voucher you can just uh, write me on that given mail id i have just shared the email id as you can see on the screen I will drop the details in the chat box too, so you can just connect with me for that. Also, we will be providing this batches, particularly for the certified people. So, if you get the certification from us, you will get this batches for uh, fundamental associate as well as the export level. So, make sure you get the training, get certified, and get this batches. Then, as I said, we are providing the free learning achievement batch. So basically, this learning achievement batch includes the modules of AZ one not four. So we are providing it for free. So you just have to follow the steps. I will share the link as well as the steps in the chat box. So you just have to follow the steps and get it redeemed. So once you redeemed it, the batch will reflect on your profile, the learn profile. You can share it on your LinkedIn profile as well. So make sure you get it redeemed. Also for AZ one not four, we have offers. As you can see, the first offer which we have is like learning journey for guided self learning, which includes uh, exam prep session from our side and the exam voucher. So this is particularly for AZ one not four certification. Then the second one is the blended learning, which includes uh, the online as well as the offline training for the AZ one not four certification. Again, it includes exam prep session from our side and exam voucher. Then the instructor lead learning. So we cover whole training. This this will be the paid training particularly for AZ-104, which includes exam prep session, self-placed learning with Microsoft online learning material plus exam voucher. So we have pricing for it. So basic plan for guided self-learning is for 4,000, which includes the orientation session, Microsoft online material, hands-on lab. Then we have exam voucher. And you can just email us if you have any question related to the topic. Then we have basic plus plan in guided self-learning, which includes basic plan plus practice test, which is for 5,000. So practice test will be taken from us. It will be like an assignment to guide you for the AZ-104 certification exam. Then the blended learning, which includes mentor, mentor session, for each exam module, then we have hands on lab in that exam voucher and Microsoft online material as well. Then this blended learning includes basic plus plan. Again, it includes practice states, so it is for 8000. Then the instructor led training, which includes in instructor led training plus hands on labs with Azure Pass, exam prep session, exam voucher and the on, uh, online material that is for 10,500. 
it also has the basic plus plan which includes the practice test so if you are interested to get it you can just contact us i will share the details in the chat box so make sure you get it if you want to get certified in az104 certification then we have next certification webinar on 11th march on sc200 microsoft security operation analyst so if you want to register for the same you can just register i will share the registration link in the chat box this will be free session free one day training for sc200 so if you if you are interested you can just go and register yourself on the registration link then do follow us on our social media platforms for the updates regarding the workshop and webinars we do we can arrange uh, any of the certification training particularly for your organization as well so if you are interested you can just share your details in the chat box or you can just connect with me for for that that's all from my side so over to you makran sir <coughs> Thank you, Chetan. So I'll share my screen. Okay. Uh, so I hope my screen is visible to you. Yes, sir. Yeah, thank you. You know, uh, so we will continue, uh, you know, uh, with our session, session of one zero four, and uh, uh, in today's session, we'll be, you know, talking about, um, you know, um, primarily uh, about compute, storage, and network. You know, so that part, you know, uh, I I will touch upon. Okay. So let's get started, uh, you know, and most of the thing, you know, uh, I will try to show you uh, uh, practically also you know, along with the concepts. So I'll share my screen. OK. So as you can see, you know, uh, this is the, you know, basic certification plan, you know. So. We are doing, you know, we are learning um, Azure administration, which is AZ-104. Okay, so if you clear you know, Azure fundamental, this course, and, you know, Azure administration course, you know, you will get uh, associate level certificate from the Microsoft, you know, okay. So this is, AZ 900, you know, okay, and this one is AZ 104, which is Azure administrator. You know, if you want to be, you know, certified in the AZ uh, 204, which is Azure developer, you, know, you can opt for that. Okay. Again, you will be, you know, uh, again, you will be uh, associate. Uh, you you will be getting a certificate uh, from Microsoft, uh, you know, associate level certificate. And if you want to be, you know, okay, expert, uh, you know, if you want to get expert level certificate, you know, along with this, so you have to be first, you know, associate to be an uh, expert. You know? So if you directly clear, you know, expert level certificate, you know, expert level exam also, you will not get that, uh, you know, certification from Microsoft. You know, until unless you become an you know, uh, associate. Okay. That may be either uh, Microsoft uh, certified as your developer or as your administrator. You know? And then you know, once you become you know, uh, associate, you can you know, choose any any path and you can you know, be an expert also. So uh, DevOps AZ400 you know, is the you know, uh, expert level certification. Okay. 
yeah so let's get start uh, you know uh, with our you know, uh, with, with our topic today so we will we will start uh, discussing with the virtual machine you know okay we will go and create a few virtual machine windows virtual machine and probably uh, linux virtual machine okay and uh, you know okay we will talk about that uh, okay uh, a little bit so what do you mean by virtual machine okay so virtual machine means what uh, no? okay a machine which is available okay for use virtually no? so it is just like your you know computer just like your you know any other machine which you are accessing you know okay so you are creating a machine on the azure cloud you know okay so when you are you know uh, creating your virtual machine you know you have to select a different uh, you know uh, uh, you have to uh, you know uh, consider the different factor in mind okay so you know uh, first you know what should be the network you know where you want to place your machine you know okay in which network you know you want to create a separate uh, you know azure virtual network okay then you no know, in which location you know okay so yesterday we have seen call as region as your region you know okay so in which region you want to place okay what is the you know operating system whether you want to use for you know uh, windows operating system server or you know client okay or you want to use a uh, linux operating system you know which is the version what is the size you know what's the cpu what's the you know uh, uh, maybe uh, memory what's the capacity you want you know as per that you know your pricing will be decided you know and pricing will be you know uh, calculated per our basis okay so all these factors you know will be considered to calculate you know uh, the pricing you know? okay so let's go and you know uh, start creating i'll just show you you know uh, where you will see uh, that virtual machine option okay so if you just uh, you know go inside your uh as your portal okay so there is an option you know, called as virtual machine you know this is the option you have to just go and get and obviously okay uh as i said yesterday you you have to be you know uh uh require if you if you have a subscription you require you know uh some kind of a permission on that subscription to create a any resource in the you know in the in the azure okay so i am going to create a virtual machine since i am having the subscription attached to my company you know this company yesterday we have created our company called as smart farm you know and since i am the owner you know okay i am having complete uh, you know okay uh, authority on this particular company you know and we switch uh, the subscription from uh, from my primary directory to this smart home you know? okay so hence i will be able to create a virtual machine okay but yesterday you know we have added few users you know you remember this so yesterday i have added you know okay a uh, few users you know? so maybe some of you have added as a users in my subscription okay so you won't be able to create uh, you know okay you won't be able to create these users won't be able to create uh, any resource under my subscription why you know because you are not having a rights who will give that rights okay who will give that rights as a administrator as a global administrator you know since i am the owner of that subscription i will be giving you know you a rights okay if i want you know you to 
you know, create uh, you know, any kind of a virtual machine, then I should provide you a right. You know, okay. So I means what? I means the this account. You know? So this is the owner account. You know, so this user should provide you, you know, rights on the subscription. You know, okay. No matter, you know, okay. You are the global administrator of the Azure, you know, Active Directory. You still not able to create the resources under my subscription since you are not having rights. You know, okay. Because yesterday we have discussed, you know, Azure, you know, administrator role, and you know. Um, resource level role or resource level access are two different things you know you know as your administrative role and our back you know are two different things so as your administrator you know roles will control what kind of a role you are having on the active directory and our back will control you know okay so what resources you will be able to create uh, within the subscription you know so since I have not given anybody, you know, the permission, okay, uh, to create any kind of a resource under my subscription, you know, nobody will be able to create. But uh, I believe a couple of people will be able to see, you know, okay. So I think this user Laksh I have provided as a reader role, you know, okay. And uh, one more person I have provided as a reader role, you know. So they will be able to see at least, okay. So. I'll just go and you know uh, create a virtual machine. But before creating a virtual machine, you know you need to put that virtual machine into some kind of a resource group. So let's go and create you know some resource group. You know? so uh, for creating a resource group, uh, you won't be uh, you know charge anything. So resource groups are free. You know, okay. So I can create a resource group. If I wish to create a resource group, another resource group, you know, okay, maybe okay. okay. So this is the name VMRG, okay. the resource group name, okay. And if I wish to write a tag, you know, I can provide a tag also, you know, okay, it is. As we discussed yesterday, it is good practice to give a tag. You know? Okay, so I'll just provide a tag. And once you provide the tag, you will be able to create you know, a resource group. Okay. And once you create a resource group, you know, okay. Um, you please look at this location. You know, we have created a resource group under East US. You know? So once you create a resource group, we will be creating next okay, our virtual machine and we will put that virtual machine under this resource group. You know? So let's go and create the virtual machine. Okay, and I'll just go and create a virtual machine. Okay, and I'll keep that uh, virtual machine under this VMRG. This is okay. The name of my resource group. Okay, I'll just go and keep the name of my virtual machine as VM02. You know, okay, so. This will be my region. OK, but uh, as we discussed, there are uh, more than 60 plus regions, you know, OK, spread it across the con you know, uh, across the globe. OK. So we uh, you know I normally select the East US, you know, because uh, uh, the resources and uh, from the East US are more economical, you know, OK, so it's uh, you know, uh, kind of good for me to save my cost. You know? OK, but uh, uh, you can you can decide you know okay uh, while choosing the you know location also while choosing the region also you know okay so you should consider you know the few factor in mind you know okay so you should consider the cost first of all 
you know okay and second thing the response time okay so you should consider latency also you know okay so latency you know the near you know uh, whatever be the uh, azure region is available to you as per your geographical location okay so whichever be the nearest uh, you know azure you know region okay which will provide you a lower lat latency okay and uh, you know uh, if you're getting a lower latency that means your application will be you know uh, work faster okay so since i am doing it uh, you know for the demo purpose for the tra training purpose you know so my you know okay uh, my consideration is only cost so i will just go for east us but you should uh, keep latency in mind and uh, the cost also in mind you know so i'll go for east us okay then we are having this option you know okay so availability options you know okay and i'll just uh, talk about that uh, what is availability okay so you are having uh, availability zone availability set okay and uh, you know virtual machine scale set vmss you know okay so these are the options which are okay under availability you will find you know okay so i'll take a moment uh, i'll just explain the concept of availability you know okay i'll take few seconds rather few minutes to explain the concept of availability okay so what do you mean by availability so if you are having a virtual machine you know okay so for example you are having a virtual machine this is uh, you know okay uh, maybe east us location which we have selected you know okay okay so this is a you know a data center you know uh, this is a region under region i may have a several data center you know okay so you may have you know several data center so there will be typically you know uh, if you are having more than one data center you will be having a three data center at least okay and you know this is my data center one this is data center two and this is data center three you know so in the data center you know okay uh, your virtual machine will be created over here you know okay somewhere over here and that virtual machine okay will be created in some kind of a physical uh, you know infrastructure you know okay so so that data center will have okay a number of server rooms okay and in one of the server room your actual virtual machine will be created you know okay okay so for example over here we are having you know okay uh, that server room and in the server room i am having you know few racks okay so over here in one of the rack you know okay your virtual machine will be created okay so in one of the rack you know your virtual machine will be created let's suppose say my virtual machine that uh, you know gets created over here you know okay in this particular rack you know okay so that uh, server rack uh, you know okay if you are you know looking uh, at server rack you know and if you might have seen you might have seen you know okay uh, the server racks you know uh, you just observe your server room of your company you know okay so that will have a bigger you know uh, machines you know okay every machine will have some kind of a power supply you know okay and you know so every node over here will be connected to the separate power supply you know so it will have a separate uh, power supply cable you know it will have a separate network cable you know okay and if let's suppose say you know okay so that rack gone down you know okay so this rack you no know, got failed okay so if this rack got failed or you know if there is any kind of a problem has happened you know into that specific uh, you know racks power supply you know then your virtual machine will be down okay and in case of your virtual machine is down you know okay so microsoft provide you a option of availability 
you know okay so if your primary virtual machine is down okay then what you know do you have a secondary virtual machine you know okay so that option will be available to you you know in the form of availability set and in the form of availability zone okay are you getting it so if i just okay come to this and you know if i just talk about what is availability set you know first we'll we'll talk about availability set you know okay since i am having a diagram over here i'll be talking about you know okay that availability set over here you know okay so if your you know one virtual machine you know is created over here okay and if you if you have configured the availability set you know okay then okay you can go and you know create another virtual machine okay into the different availability set you know okay the availability set will be chosen as you know same availability set but actually you know microsoft does what you know okay microsoft creates your virtual machine into the different uh, you know fault domain or update domain there is a concept called as a fault domain and update domain you know okay so your virtual machine let's suppose say the first virtual machine is created in the fault domain 0 okay then the second virtual machine will be created in the fault domain 1 okay so first virtual machine you know you have created in the update domain uh, you know update domain 0 uh, then the second virtual machine will be created in the update domain 1 you know okay so at any given point if you know your infrastructure level failure has happened okay so if this server rack goes down okay in that case you know okay you can still you know your user will be still be you know able to access your data you know okay by using the virtual machine which is available over here okay but you need to remember microsoft guarantees only you know okay the infrastructure level failure okay so whatever be the application data it is your responsibility you know to keep in sync you know that microsoft does not do anything you know for you you know okay so whatever be the infrastructure that goes you know that goes down you know okay then you know okay so to you know avoid the downtime you know okay microsoft provide you know uh, that option of availability set so in short availability set you know can save you from you know server rack level failure okay availability set can save you from server rack level failure you know okay so exam point of view you know okay this scenario which i have you know just told you you know that uh, you should remember you know okay so you can remember also from exam point of view maximum fault domain we can create you know is 3 and maximum update domain we can have is 20 okay so maximum fault domain we can have 3 and maximum update domain we can have 20 okay and availability set will save you from you know uh, the server rack level failure okay got it now let's suppose say you know okay there is you know data center level failure you know okay so maybe um, your power supply you know gone of your entire you know data center entire premises entire building okay there is some kind of a fault has happened you know okay so so if your entire data center down then availability set can't help you you know okay if your entire data center is down you know then fault domain 1 fault domain 2 you know whatever be the you know uh, 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 
you know uh, machines you are having into a different availability set you know all that will be down okay so in case of a data center level failure you know okay what can help you you know your azure region you know so so availability zone so availability zone you know okay is a concept which can help you from okay which can help you from um, you know data center level failure which which help us to recover a data you know from a data center level failure okay so this will protect you from you know data center level failure you know okay so if you have selected what uh, you know uh, while creating a virtual machine you know so you can choose in which availability zone you want to create a virtual machine so you can say i want to create first virtual machine in you know uh, over here in availability zone 1 okay and if you want to create a duplicate virtual machine you know okay then okay uh, the second virtual machine which you will be creating that will be either in the availability zone 2 or either in a availability zone you know so if one data center down you know okay still you will be having you know uh, uh, the machines which is uh, you know present inside another data center you know so this can save you from you know data center level failure but again this will save you from the infrastructure level failure you know microsoft is not going to do you know uh, help you you know in uh, you know recovering that data so whatever be the data you know you have to be keeping you know sync that data and the application which you are having okay so whatever be the modification in the application you are doing you know it should be done you know okay in both you know the virtual machine okay and the third concept you are having okay third concept you are having you know uh, so what if um, your you know uh, this data this region is us maybe you can you know consider is a particular city you know okay so for example in india you know we are having a three azure uh, you know region you know uh, one is uh, situated in you know uh, uh, west india you know okay in mumbai location one is situated in south india in chennai location and one is situated in uh, you know central india you know that might be in delhi okay so what if you know your entire region goes down you know okay so maybe uh, you know you can think of uh, uh, any kind of uh, you know uh, natural uh, or human in this uh, you know uh, maybe disaster has happened you know okay so so to recover you from you know okay that situation there is a concept called as you know region pay you know okay so you require your machine to be created in one region okay and there is a paired region you know okay which is associated with this so like for example east us has paired with the uh, west us and you can't change this you know this is a static you know okay so whatever be the pairing you are having you know okay uh, that is decided by the azure you know uh, that is decided by the microsoft you know okay you can't change okay like for example south india you know okay is with uh, central india paired with central india okay so you cannot change that you no know? okay so if you want to you know uh, save from that disaster recovery you know? okay so you need to be create you know your resource into the different region you know and make sure you will be creating that uh, you know resource into the you know okay region pair you know to uh, you know take the benefit of you know this okay 
So I'll just go on. You know, so you just understand this conceptually, you know, practically, you know, uh, I can't show you anything, you know, okay, because uh, I can't have that failure. Okay, so I can't control the failure. You know? So that's why I, I cannot show you practically, but conceptually, you know, okay, you have understood me. So I'll just availability option and no infrastructure redundancy required. You know? I'll just select that. Okay. Then you know, I'll just choose what kind of a machine I'll be creating. So I'll be creating uh, maybe Windows machine. So I can choose what Windows 2020 data center, or I may choose you know, this. Let me pick that uh, latest one. You know? So I'll just go and keep the username. Password. OK, and. So which are the port uh, you want to, you know, OK, uh, open, you know, so you can control that, you know, uh, so. Which are the port I want to open so I can choose, you know, Okay, by default it is open double three eight nine, which is uh, for RDP, you know, remote desktop protocol. So you will be able to connect uh, remotely by using this particular port. You know, so I can take a remote connection. You know, if I have this uh, uh, port open, you know, so I can go and choose. Okay, eighty, eighty for you know HTTP, twenty two for SSH. You know, four four three for HTTPS. Okay, so whatever you know, you are going to configure over here. You know, so that will get configured ultimately inside a NSG. Okay, NSG stands for Network Security Group. Okay, so I am going to allow these. Port, you know, so that network security group is going to help you to secure uh, your you know, virtual machine. OK, so it will be allowed request only on these port number, you know, OK, only on 80 port number and double three eight nine port number. You know, other than that, you know, any request you send you know, to any other port number, it will be blocked by the initial. OK, it will be blocked by, you know, network security group, you know. So. OK, so this part, especially, you know, you remember this part will be configured you know, into the network security group and network security group is a separate resource of Azure. You remember that network security group is a separate resource of Azure that will get created along with you know, OK, the virtual machine. OK, so along with virtual machine, you know, OK, there are several resources will be created, you know, OK. So I'll just tell you the first resource which will get created, you know, OK, is the virtual machine. OK. Then second, you know, OK, a resource will be created you know, is for disk. OK, so. Depending on what size you have chosen, you know, OK. Uh, by the way, this is not for disk. This is for CPU and, you know, um, uh, maybe a RAM. You know? So what size you have chosen, you know, as to that it will price. You know? OK, accordingly it will price. So I'll just go with um, DS1 V2. That's the okay. DS1 V3 is a default option, you know, AGB option. So I'll just go with that. Okay. So the next option, okay, which will get created, uh, you know, is your you know disk. Okay. Can you see this? So over here, you know, okay. 
your disk will be created. OK, so which option you are choosing? You know, you are selecting what? Uh, premium SSD. OK, and there are other options also are available. OK, like for example, you know, uh, standard SSD, you know, and standard HDD. OK. OK. But for you know a uh, lot of time uh, for the production workload, you you will be selecting you know SSD option, which is premium SSD. But for uh, you know development uh, you know time, you can you know go for you can opt you know SSD or HS HDD. HD HDD is you know most economical option. So if you have a you know a price issue or if you have a budget issue, you can go and choose this you know okay SSD. But I'll go with uh, you know okay this SSD standard SSD okay so other than that you know this is the OS drive which will get created you know okay so that means I will I will see only one drive C drive in my virtual machine you know? okay but if you want you know to have more than one drive you know, to your virtual machine you can create another drive another disk also you know from uh, sure, you know, by configuring a you know uh, additional disk, you know, from here, you know, so this disk will be you know acting as a separate uh, you know uh, separate resource in the Azure. Okay, so we'll go to uh, you know networking section, you know, okay, and in the network section. You know, if you look at very first option, you know, is for virtual network. You know, so virtual machine you will be creating. Okay, so that will be placed by default inside a virtual network. You know, okay, and you know it will be created new virtual network. So if you want to keep into a specific virtual network, you can choose. You know, your specific virtual network from this list. But I'll go with this uh, name, you know, VMRG VNet. You know, that's the specific uh, virtual network. Within the virtual network, you know, uh, I'll be having uh, one subnet. Okay, and this is the address range for that you know, subnet. Okay, then there will be a public IP which will get created so that. You can access it uh, by using the internet, you know, so that we can access it, uh, you know, uh, that machine by using, you know, uh, from from our machine, from our laptop, you know, we can access that, okay, by using the internet, you know. So, and you know, this public IP address will be acting as a separate resource, you know. This virtual network will be acting as a separate resource, you know, and the these resources are, you know, especially from the network. These resources will be created as a separate network resource. So it will be separate virtual network will be created and separate uh, public IP will be created. Okay. Okay. So the next point, you know, I'll just go and choose a tag. What team I have given owner, I think. Owner or user. user. So I'll just go and select and I'll just go and review and create. So you can see as per my configuration, this is going to charge, you know, approximately to me, you know, is around 7.5, you know, seven and a half rupees per hour. So this, this will be charged. Okay. And this includes uh, your uh, license cost also. Huh? And if you are having a license with you, you know, okay, then you can reduce the cost. Okay. Because that Windows license will be, you know, included in, with this cost. Okay, and let me create. So 
So this will take at least one minute to create. Meanwhile, you are writing something on the chat box. And that's basically, you know, uh, ARM 64 and you know X64. These are basically um, uh, the different versions of uh, you know uh, the machines component. You know you are having the machine architecture. You are having 32 bit architecture, 64 bit architecture. No, okay. That that is you know different machine. Okay. So there are. You know, few machines will be from Intel and few machines from a different, you know, okay, vendor. You know, so that is having a 64 bit architecture, but from a different vendor. No infrastructure redundancy required means I do not want, uh, you know, okay. Uh, any kind of a redundancy. I do not want any kind of a uh, that availability set or availability zone option. Okay, so you can see. So these many you know resources has been you know uh, created. And okay. the first one is the virtual machine. Second one is uh, the virtual interface. Okay, virtual interface card, you know, uh, which includes, uh, you know, uh, your, uh, you know, uh, that will be attached to your machine. That will be attached to your, you know, virtual machine. And third one is a network security group. Okay, next one is uh, you know public IP address. Okay, and next one is uh, you know uh, virtual network get uh, sorry uh, uh, the virtual network itself. So your resource will be created, and if you just you know, go into this resource, okay, and you can see you know okay, so you are having these options. So you can see these option. You can control your virtual machine. You will be able to connect to your virtual machine. You know, you will be able to start. You'll be able to restart. You'll be able to stop. You know, okay. You will be able to capture your virtual machine. You know, on the capture the image of your virtual machine. You know, okay. You will be able to delete the virtual machine. You know, and so on. That. So as of now, the virtual machine is started. That's why this you know option is coming disabled. Okay. So once your virtual machine is started, you know, we can go and you know, connect to this virtual machine. OK, and if I just go and connect to my virtual machine, you know, so I can take the IP address. And uh, OK, so I can open what remote desktop from my computer or you know, you can just go and download the RDP. You know, so these are the three ways, you know, OK. Uh, using which you will be uh, connecting the virtual machine. So if I want to connect uh, you know, um, uh, Windows based machine, then RDP is the option. OK, so RDP stands for remote desktop protocol. You know? So I will just go and download RDP file. You know? So this will download RDP file. And you have to open that uh, you know RDP file. Okay. So you will see this option once you open that RDP file. Okay. And once you will be uh, you know uh, connecting, you you will you know will be connecting to this particular machine. You know. Okay. Then you will have to provide that uh, you know uh, uh, the credential, username, and the password. You know? Okay. But by default, it is picking uh, my uh, you know, machine username. So I'll just go and select. I don't want to use that. I want to use different account. So I'll just put uh, this and my password, and I'll say. Okay. 
and you know this will connect to the virtual machine which we have created just now okay okay so once your virtual machine is created so you will be able to see it is you know just like another machine you are having you know okay see uh, this machine you know uh, will be most of the time you know will be useful you can think of uh, so you are having uh, maybe if you are using a company machine you know so uh, there are a lot of thing a uh, lot of time you will have uh, many restriction on your company machine you know okay and you want to try out something you know so because of that company restriction you you know you cannot uh, you know try try out that thing on your you know laptop then in that case what you can do you can create a a machine which is uh, you know okay which is on the azure the machine is called as virtual machine because you are you know you are creating virtually a machine you know okay and uh, you will be acting as an administrator of that machine so you can do anything whatever you want you know okay there is not you know any restriction you are having over there okay you can you see you know okay so over here so this is as good as you know another machine okay so this is having okay this is uh, the start button of your virtual machine so let me just point open the drives you know? so this you are you can see you know in this machine i'm just having you know uh, this c drive you know, this is uh, your you know your temporary drive this is not uh, you know on the drive in which you can keep uh, your data you know so your temporary drive you know um, the whatever be the files you cannot rely on that temporary drive you know in case of um, you know uh, so for example in case of a failure you know if you are keeping it in the um, you know availability set you know virtual machine okay uh, so which is present in the one particular fault domain you know and because of the failure okay so that fault domain goes down you know okay so that uh, microsoft will you know arrange the another machine you know okay into the another fault domain you know okay so over there you know you will not get you know this temporary storage you know so temporary storage is you know as i said you know um, as the name suggests it is for temporary you cannot rely on that temporary storage you know okay because sometime your data might get lost okay and uh, you know uh, in this you know scenario also you will get one you know question you know okay uh, you know in the certification examination so you have to you know uh, be sure about your temporary storage also so when your temporary storage will be you know okay data will be available when it will not be available you know okay so that you have to you know understand But over here, primary drive, you no, know, okay. So only one C drive will be created, and this is not my, you know, machine, my laptop drive, you know, okay. This is the virtual machine drive we have created. Okay, so let me just go and add, you know, okay, quickly one server role. okay so i'm just adding that is server you know okay and very first thing let me just go and you know, come to the overview section and let me take this ip address and if you just open a browser you know okay give this url so 
this if you just open this url you know you are sending the request to the port number 80 you know okay on what machine you know so you are sending the request to that virtual machine which we have created just now you know and you are giving a request on port number 80 so whatever be the application running on port number 80 you will be able to see that application okay so as of now there is no application which is running on the port number 80 you no know? okay so i will just go and okay go to this vm and i will just go and add you know one server you know iis server so let, let me just go and install it quickly so role based selection okay then after that uh, you know, this and from this list you will have to choose you know, web server role is add the feature okay once you added this feature okay it will ask us to say next okay let me say next and you know, let me you know, I'll just select what uh, default you know, option, which is whichever be available. I'll just say next and I'll say install. OK, so it will take, you know, uh, maybe one or two minutes to install this particular IIS role, IIS server, you know. So once I install this IIS server, I will be able to, you know, uh, send the request. OK. So we'll be able to send the request you know, from here. Isn't it? Getting it, guys. So do you have any kind of a query on this? So as of now, it is getting installed. Uh, so uh, Nijam is asking something. Okay? So how much uh, bandwidth consumed by each virtual machine? So that uh, we can do it, uh, you know, in the monitoring section. Okay? So how much, uh, you know, uh, inbound data and outbound data that we can monitor? Okay. Yeah, my installation is finished. I say close. You know, and I believe once you require, you know, a restart once the installation is completed. But let me just try without doing restart. Yeah, so it is working without, uh, you know, a restart also. So once you install that web server, you know, okay, this is the uh, default page. You know, uh, related to that web server, you will get over here. Okay, so this web server, you know, okay, uh, I have installed, you know, on IIS. Okay, oh, sorry, uh, this web server, IIS web server, I have installed on this VM, this virtual machine. Got it? So similarly, 
you can go and create you know okay linux space virtual machine you know also okay so we can create a linux space virtual machine okay and using a putty tool you know we can access that linux space virtual machine you know okay so let's move ahead Okay, uh, if I, you know, create, uh, you know, uh, any kind of a virtual machine scale set. You know? So let me just see whether I'm having a diagram with that or not. No. So I don't have a diagram. So I'll just, uh, you know, try to explain you. So for example, you are having, you know, any kind of a, you know, virtual machine scale set, you know. So as per the concept, you know, what is concept? So, so initially, let's suppose say you are having one single virtual machine. Okay. And, you know, this virtual machine is having some capacity, you know. Okay. So, so initially, you know, you have created an application, you have deployed that application on a virtual machine. Okay, and uh, uh, for you know maybe for initial days you know there is a less traffic on that uh, you know application you know so your requirement was fulfilled you know okay so your having a one virtual machine is enough for you you know if you, if you are not having you know a lot of load on your virtual machine on your application you know okay but suddenly you know, your application has become popular. Okay, and there are a lot of uh, you know uh, traffic is coming on your you know application. Okay, so you know the utilization of these machine you know gone higher. You know okay, so maybe you know utilization of this you know machine okay reaches to certain point. You know okay, maybe ninety five percent or nine ninety eight percent. Okay, and you know it might be you know okay chance that your machine get crash you know okay so what i can do you know by configuring a virtual machine scale set vmss what is that vmss vmss stands for virtual machine scale set so i can define you know the rule you know so if maybe my you know cp utilization okay goes beyond 60 percent you know okay maybe for you know consistently for maybe 10 15 minutes okay then you know please go and create one more virtual machine for me you know then it is going to configure you know another virtual machine you know and it will uh, you know okay uh, the both the virtual machine will run under you know load balancer okay so whatever be the request you know incoming request you know okay the traffic will go you know traffic will go and hit to the virtual machine okay but before hitting to the virtual machine it will be you know okay uh, it will be gone under you know load balancer will go from load balancer you know? so we'll have something called as a load balancer you know? and the load balancer will equally distribute your traffic. Okay. So, how many instances we can create? You know, okay. So, for example, I want a maximum 10 instances, you know, 10 CPU instances. One instance means what? You know, one virtual machine, you know, okay. So, like that, I want maximum 10, uh, you know, 10 virtual machine, you know, okay. And if you know okay um during a off season you know your you know load goes down you know okay or during night time your load goes down 
you know okay and we can you know uh, you know uh, you know define that also you know when to increase our you know machine when to in increase our you know uh, instance count and when to decrease our instance count you know that is called as in the technical term that is called as a auto scaling you know so i can define that auto scaling rules basically you know okay and there are two types of auto scaling you know okay so one is horizontal scaling okay horizontal scaling means what you are creating you know okay you are having a virtual machine you are having a resource okay and you want be uh, you know uh, you will be creating you know multiple resources so that means you are scaling you know okay horizontally and vertical scaling means what you know you are having a resource of a you know lower capacity you know so you will be creating you know you know uh, the resource of a bigger capacity you know that means you are vertically scaling you know so you can see this Okay, vertical scaling. So you are having initially a resource of lower capacity. You will be increasing, you know, resource, and you will be making a resource of a bigger capacity. Okay, you know, you will be increasing resource, you know, and you will be making a bigger capacity resource. So that is called as, you know, scale up. So when you are increasing the resource, okay, in the vertical scaling, that is called as scale up. when you are decreasing the resource okay that is called as scale down you know so scale up and scale down you know these are two types which fall under vertical scaling okay and scale in and scale out you know these terms you know uh, specifically we will use in the horizontal scaling you know so i am having a one virtual machine or one resource you know so if demand goes up you know i will be creating you know another virtual machine you know that means i am doing what scaling out you know if i am having two that is also not enough to handle the load you know i'll create one more you know that is again scaled down you know so if my less uh, you know i'm ham uh, you know i'm having a less load you know so i need to remove one you know so i'll be removing one that is called as scale in okay i am removing one that is called as scale in you know so remember this uh, you know words specifically all right guys and so i will just show you let me just close this screen and you know uh, you can also connect uh, you know to my vm you know okay okay but obviously you need you know the credential Uh, for accessing the my vm so let me just go and create you know a uh, one you know, vm of linux but i i won't be creating a vm only you know i will be configuring you know a virtual machine scale set and i will be putting that uh, you know uh, linux virtual machine into the scale set You no know? okay so i'll just show you no know? okay show you okay how to create that virtual machine scale set okay so i'll just go and create this virtual machine scale set okay so we can say click create okay you can define the resource group in which resource group you want to keep i can say the name of virtual machine scale set okay so you can pick in which region you want to keep virtual machine scale set okay then 
what is the you know image i will pick image okay so you can see you know for this particular image this is not uh, you know okay available You can pick up the size of the you know image. I'll go with this this size, okay. But I want I don't want this. I want Ubuntu maybe. So I'll just pick that Ubuntu maybe eighteen. I'll pick okay. And um, maybe for this size, you know, this is going to cost you you know this amount five thousand five hundred rupees per month. Okay, and there are there are two kinds of authentication. You know, okay, you will be able to do you know uh, in the um, for the uh, the Linux Linux space virtual machine. You can access it to um, the password or by using a SSH you know public keys. You know, okay, but for accessing through the password is you know simple. So I'll just go and pick up that you know okay password. In SSH uh, base key, we'll have to generate a key and we'll have to provide that key. So there is a uh, you know, um, uh, you know, additional setup is there. You no, know? so I'll not uh, get into that. I'll just give the password, username, password. Okay, and so once I select this. Okay, let me just go and go to this. Okay, so it is more like you know um, that option is going to give you a more like you're creating a virtual machine. That similar kind of option you will get, but the only difference inside the networking section you will find there's an additional option you will get it over here. You know, okay, and this will allow you to configure a load balancer. So this is additional, you know, uh, you will get in the VMSs, you know, because ultimately VMSs uh, will be, you know, run, uh, you know, okay, under a load balancer, you know, okay. So I will uh, pick up a load balancer, okay, and as of now there is no load balancer, so I'll create a new load balancer. Okay, and there are two types of load balancer, public and internal. You know, as the name suggests, you know, public uh, load balancer is going to face the public. You know, uh, the face the end user. You know, okay, and maybe internal load balancer. You know, okay, is uh, you know uh, we can access within the you know okay network within the virtual net. Okay, so. I'll just give this name of load balancer. Okay. And I'll just go and you know specify this. So okay. You know, you can see this rule. Okay. So this is a load balancer rule, you know. Okay. So you're going to send the request on ET, then you will receive that uh, you know request in the backend pool on ET, you know. But these are the you know okay thing which is related to the connection. Okay, so primarily you know when you give the request on this port number, you know, okay, then okay from the backend side you know this will connect to this port number, okay. Okay, so of course we can configure this also, you know. Okay, but I'll go with that default. You know? Okay, but back inside, you know, this will be connecting to the, you know, uh, ultimately to the Linux space virtual machine, you know. And you know, for accessing a Linux space virtual machine, I will be using SSH protocol, you know. And SSH protocol, you know, uh, runs on. 22 port number. So we'll have to you know, uh, open this port number. You know? Okay. So this port number required to you know uh, required to be opened, you know, under NSG. 
Okay, and this rule, <coughs> where we are setting this rule, inside the <coughs> load balancer. Okay, so actually speaking, what will happen? You know? Okay, so there will be one virtual machine skill set will be created. Okay, you can imagine this way. It will be one virtual machine skill set will be created, VMSS. Okay, inside that, you know, okay, I will have one virtual machine, which is Linux space virtual machine. You know, so the name of that virtual machine, okay, I'm just giving a default name, VM01. So let's suppose say this is the name of this virtual machine. This is what Linux space virtual machine, you know, okay. So for accessing this Linux space virtual machine, you know, okay. Generally, I will not have a public IP, you know, okay. The machine which are set inside the VMS is that the machine will not have a public IP usually, you know, okay. So if you are not having this public IP, you know, okay. So you, your client, will be accessing this machine by using something called as a load balancer. You know, OK, so here you're going to have what you know, something called as load balancer. OK, so how the client will access this? You know, OK, so client will open any kind of a, you know, tool, for example, putty tool, you know, client will give the request, you know, OK, on the port number, you know, Okay, 5,000, sorry, 50,000. Okay, so when you get the request, incoming request, you know, okay, from the user, from the end user, you will get, you know, on 50,000 port number, but internally it will navigate, you know, okay, it will redirect to the backend port, you know, backend pool, you know, on the 22 port. Are you getting it? So, you know, okay, what it is going to happen? Okay, so, your client is going to send the request on the 50,000, you know, but internally this will, you know, okay, um, translate that, you know, okay, address or translate that port number to, you know, uh, 22. So that setting we have done in the NAT rule. NAT stands for Network Address Translation, you know, or sometimes, you know, it is called as Destination Network Address Translation. NAT okay, or DNAT. Okay, so I hope you know this is uh, clear to you. And one more point you need to remember this 22 is a port number we have to you know uh, enable, otherwise, we will not be able to connect you know, to that uh, virtual machine because by default, you know, uh, that port number is not uh, enabled. So where we can enable that port number under the NHT. Okay, so NHT setting we will see down below. I don't know. So here it should show you that NHT setting. It is not showing me. That's okay. Uh, we can set it, uh, you know, after creation also. Okay, then. Very uh, important, you know. Okay, so we'll be choosing. Okay, our scaling rule. You know? Okay, so this is important. So initially, how many you know instances you will be having? So let's say I'll be having instance only one. You know. Okay, so if you are you know okay getting the you know more load on this virtual machine on this instance. Okay, then you want to you know uh, increase if your load decreases then you want to in decrease that load you know decrease the instance you know? okay so i'll be defining that rule custom rule let's define okay so i'll just go and have minimum number of instances one maximum number of instances i'll just go and keep three okay so you can see this so this is by default uh, you know okay uh metrics which will provide you cpu threshold you know so if the cpu utilization okay is more than 75 percent 75 percent or more than 75 percent 
for maximum you know okay for consistently for 10 minutes you know okay then it will create one new instance okay okay so i can just go and keep this for five minutes but uh, in the real time you can keep it maybe 10 minutes 15 minutes you know okay since it is practice i'll just keep it fine i can't keep it less than five minutes okay. that five minute is the minimum value okay so that is scaling out rule you know okay and scaling in rule you know okay so if your you know uh, cpu load 25% or less than 25%, you know, okay, then I want to decrease one instance. So let's see. Okay, so we have defined this rule. Okay, and once we define this rule, let me just go and define a tag also. And once I define a tag, okay, let me review and Okay, meanwhile, this is getting created. Okay. Let us see some very concept. You know, there is something called as you know uh, a virtual machine extension also. Exam point of view, you should remember that, you know, and at least you should uh, you know remember you know uh, how to you know uh, what is the process of you know installing the custom extension, you know. Okay. So that process, you know, uh, you should be familiar at least. Example into so. So if you want to, you know, um, install a custom extension, you know, uh, during the you know virtual machine creation, we can install a custom extension. Okay, or after my virtual machine is created, you know, I can just go and install, you know, custom extension. You know, okay. So there are a lot of custom extensions, you know, okay, they are having. Okay, so uh, to be specific, there are a lot of extension you are having for the virtual machine. Okay, so one, you know, extension we will be using, you know, uh, going ahead, you know, in this custom extension and using that custom extension, you know, we will, uh, you know, install something. Okay, and you can, you know, um, understand now this custom extension will be different you know uh, for windows and different for uh, linux space virtual machine you know? and typically uh, this custom extension will help us to uh, maintain the desired state of my virtual machine you know there is a something you know term called as desired state configuration you know so my virtual machine, if I'm creating a virtual machine, if I want, you know, that virtual machine, you know, to be into one particular state when it created initially, then whatever be the required software, I can install those required software with this custom extension script. Okay. So you can you know um, install this custom extension you know during uh, initial setup or you know okay after uh, creating a virtual machine also okay so this is the you know a script uh, for installing you know that iis server only you know so if i want uh, my uh, every virtual machine whenever I, I create a virtual machine that should always has you know um, the ia server you know so i can create uh, you know one custom extension 
and I can just install that custom extension on every time, you know, while creating that virtual machine. So it is not required for you to install that virtual machine soft, uh, sorry, uh, into that virtual machine, the server, IIS server. Nidam is asking some question. I created one VM and configure for IS with two core two GB under VM skill set. Now I need to configure CPU core once reach 80% new VM to be added. I have a query. New VM have existing configuration or we need to reconfigure it again. Uh, there is, a, you know, okay, uh, it will have a, you know, a same configuration. So as my initial uh, virtual machine, no, you know, it will have a same configuration. So during that uh, creation time, you will get that option. So you want a uniform configuration or, you know, um, the, there is some kind of a difference in the configuration you want. You know? Okay, so, uh, while selecting, we have chosen what the uniform configuration. So every time the new instance will be created, you know, whatever be the um, state of my initial instance, it will be, you know, same state uh, of your, the new instance will be. Okay, so my, uh, finally my uh, virtual machine skill set is created. Okay, so let me go into this resource okay and uh, so you will see this you know, okay public ip but this is actually a public ip of load balancer so remember this uh 22 uh, 20.228 193 183 now it is actually you know the ip address of my load balancer so let me just verify okay so whether my load balancer is also having a same IP address. Okay, so there is one load balancer we have configured. Okay, and this is a public facing load balancer. And there are two types of a load balancer. We have public load balancer and we have private load balancer. So it is public load balancer. You know, we have created. Okay, and if I go to this IP front IP configuration, you know, okay, and if I just go and see, you know, okay, this is the IP for, you know, my load balancer 20.228.193.183. It is the same IP, you know, okay, so it is actually, you know, the IP address of the load balancer. You know, so inside, you know, this, okay, inside this VMSS, we have configured a instance, you know, okay, so you can see that, okay, so this instance is actually a virtual machine, you know, so VMSS 01, okay, so this is actually a virtual machine, you know, and if I just go inside that, okay, so this is, the virtual machine, which is not having a public IP. So you can't access this, you know, directly. You know, from internet, you cannot access it because, you know, it is not having a public IP. You know? Okay. But you're having a private IP. Okay. So within the network, you will be able to access. Okay. But uh, from outside network, from your home machine, you, you would be you know, able to directly access this machine. You know? And you can see, you know, current CPU percentage, you know, okay, it's gone down. Okay. And once it reach, you know, 75% for maybe consistently for five minutes, you know, then you will notice, you know, okay, there is one more instance will be created over here. Okay, so over here, I'll see 
one more instance. When when the CPU load increases, okay. So I can just show you, you know, how to connect to this. Okay. Uh, by the way, we can increase also our load, you know, but uh, you know, we don't have a time to show you that. But uh, you know, there is a tool called as stress tool. You know? So if you just go and install that stress tool you will be able to generate you know artificial load you know on your linux based virtual machine or windows based virtual machine okay so let me just go and get that ip address once again so using this ip address you know and i will be using what since it is linux based virtual machine will be using Putty tool. You know? So Putty is a is a client tool, you know, uh, which require you to access any kind of a Linux space uh, virtual machine. You know? So which virtual machine you will be accessing? The virtual machine which we will be accessing that is not having a direct uh, public IP. So I don't have any uh, public IP, but I will be providing the IP address of you know uh, this load balancer you know but inside this load balancer you know i should have something called as nat rule okay. can you see this nat rule network address translation rule you know okay and if i just look at what are those nat rule you know okay so if you just send you know uh, the request to this particular port number you know then it will be you know a uh, target port number will be you know okay 22 from this be pool what is that be pool okay is the name of your you know okay uh name of your backend be pool what is that it's actually a name of your backend you know so any one of the instance will be you know connected so since currently I'm having only one instance, you know, okay. So that instance will be connected when, when you give a request on 50,000, okay. But that, you know, uh, giving that 50,000 request, you know, okay, on this, uh, will connect on this port number 22. But that 22 port number, you know, must be open, okay. And I'll check out that whether my port number is open or not because while creation that option was not available to me. Under networking, we should have that option. Yeah, so over here, you know, OK, so you should get this option. OK, so we should configure network security group and we should have one inbound rule you know, for which service for SSH service. You know? So let's allow that. OK, so allow the connection, whichever be the request which is coming for you know this port number 22 port number. Let's allow that. OK. And once it is created, you know, okay, let's give one or you know, or maybe 30 seconds to one minute of a time, you know, okay, just to you know reflect that changes. And once it is, you know, okay, the configuration is completed successfully, then you should be able to access you know um, that virtual machine. Okay. So this is the okay, the port I have allowed. So 22 port have a lot. OK, so exam point of view, you know, uh, you should familiar with the network, uh, you know, interface um, for network security group. OK, network interface is just, you know, somebody has asked me a question. Network interface is just, you know, a network component which will be attached to the, you know, uh, to the computer, you know, under network interface card, you know, I will see, okay, 
um maybe my ip address configuration you know okay so everything i will see it over here under network interface you know car okay since that uh, you know um ip address is uh, not available for this particular machine you know okay so i can't see that ip address now right now okay so now let me connect you know Sorry, I have given the wrong port number. I think I have given a 20 port number, no? 22, no? So, so this will give you error. Okay, so you can see this network timeout. So, okay. I'll just try again. take this IP and I should give, you know, because 50,000 is a port number I'm having in the load balancer. Okay, and load balancer will redirect you to 22 port number. Okay. So it has taken, okay, and let me specify my ID, username and the password. Okay. So when you type password, it is not visible. Okay, and once you get into that, you know, you will see this prompt. Okay. And over here, I can just go and see my present working directory. I can see LS is no directory. Okay. Maybe LS hyphen A. Okay. So you can check. You know, all these commands I am firing of Linux command. I'm executing. So I'm able to you know, connect to my you know, Linux space virtual machine uh, via that load balancer. Okay. What is guys? Okay. So if you want to you know, check out you know, uh, whether the load, uh, if you want to you know, increase the load on your virtual machine, okay, uh, then for that, uh, you know, I believe you have to install uh, maybe one tool called a stress tool. Okay. So if you install that stress tool and if you you know, execute that stress tool, no, you know, okay. uh, then you will see, you know, there is you know, instance count will be increased to one. Okay. Let me just show you, let me just try. Okay, so let's one this command is because I was trying this for the couple of time it was not uh, getting connected. So this command itself was not getting executed and get the update. And if this not get executed properly, uh, we will have problem in installing this stress.
Okay, so so if you just use this command, then this tool stress tool will be you know okay, executed or will be installed. And if you just use this you know uh, stress command, you know then you know we are just artificially um, maybe increasing the load. And if you just you keep this you know terminal open for maybe five minutes, you know you will see, you know you will observe. Okay, there is one more you know, instance count has increased. You know? But as of now, I can't show you that practically because that uh, you know, app get command itself is not working. You know, that packages are not getting you know uh, installed properly. Okay, but this is the you know um, command. You know? If you want to do this, you know stuff for you know Windows related machine, you know okay, then on the Windows related machine. You know, uh, you have to just configure that uh, VMS is you know exactly same way, and there is one tool you know okay called as CPU stress. Okay, so you have to download this tool. Okay, you will get a zip file, and you have to just open that tool and you know increase the load. Okay, so that's the uh, you know simple step uh, in case of a Windows based uh, you know okay, VM. Got it. So let's you know, move ahead. Okay, and I will just uh, you know show you that practically you know okay how to use this uh, you know um, custom uh, script you know custom extension in, in the next upcoming you know okay demo. Okay. Okay, so let us uh, you know uh, talk about little bit about uh, you know okay storage account. Okay, so storage account um, is you know is a service you know from the you know Azure Storage. You know it is one of the Azure Storage service you have. Okay, so storage account is one of the Azure Storage service you know we are having. Okay, and uh, Inside the storage account, if you look at, okay, uh, we are having you know services such as you know a container, okay, uh, the tables, queue, and files, you know, okay. So container, you know, okay, maintains some kind of a blob, you know, okay. And uh, so from the exam point of view, you know uh, the meaning of uh, container, meaning of table, queue, files. You know, okay, uh, it should be clear to you. you no, know? okay. So most probably, uh, you know, exam point of view, uh, no more focus will be on you know container and blobs. You know, okay, as compared to other you know three types. Okay, so especially container, you know. Um, and blob especially can hold any kind of a you know uh, uh, you know any kind of a binary files you know which includes images document you know audio video files you know okay uh, database backup some kind of a log you know it will also include okay so whereas you know your table is responsible for holding any kind of a you know um, no sql kind of a data okay which include uh, you know okay or uh, relational data also, which can also include relational, you know, data also. Okay, so table, you know, do not get confused. You know? Okay, this is not uh, like a, you know, normal database table where every row will have, you know, uh, same number of column. Okay, so it is, it is like a no SQL table. You know? Okay, so where, you know, um, every row will have a you know a variable number of columns okay but uh, you know uh, since you know uh, 
the introduction of cosmos db you know uh, the table storage uh, you know, uses of a table storage has you know decreased now you know? so from the exam point of view also you know okay um, they are not given a focus on table and queue you know okay they had given a focus on mostly on you know containers blob okay and you will get uh, you know okay hardly a question uh, related to the files okay so files uh, you know uh, if you want to make any kind of a uh, you know uh, file storage in the uh, in the storage account and if you want to use that you know storage you know just like your you know shared drive you know of your company's uh, you know shared drive so every you know company machine okay uh, you will find that shared drive you know okay where, where you will be having you know the similar kind of a data which is uh, present inside that you know shared drive because of course it is going to be a shared drive you know okay so if you are adding any kind of a file into that you know okay then it will be added to you know all other user also okay okay and there are you know um, uh, these many kinds of you know storage account type you know but for general purpose you know we will go for this you know okay storage account you know type you know general purpose v2 you know is include you know most of the scenario okay okay there are these many uh, type of a uh, replication strategy you know okay so for example uh, you know uh, example point of view, you should remember this huh? you know so what is you know what do you mean by lrs what is zrs what is grs you know okay and uh, okay optionally you can read r a g r s you know okay so you now if you are keeping your data you know okay um in the uh, locally redundant storage okay the application type you have chosen as locally redundant storage you know okay so your data will be ultimately stored you know uh, into the data center in, into the server you know so whatever be the server you know it will make you know okay within that you know data center it will going to make a uh, three copies okay so you do not have to do anything you know this is the responsibility of a microsoft you know microsoft handle it you know internally you know so this is going to make a uh, three copies okay so if you look at you know lrs you know okay so this can lrs can save you you know of course okay from the server rack level failure okay but uh, in case of you know okay uh, entire data center goes down you know then your data is also you know okay um, you know uh, maybe your service or your data will be temporarily un unavailable okay till that time you know uh, that uh, once again come back okay and in case of a zrs you know okay so every uh, you know uh, data center typically have you know uh, more than one you know region okay so this is availability zone 1 2 and 3 okay not all region supports availability zone but whatever you know region support availability zone that has three region you know oh, sorry uh, three three zone you know okay availability zone 1 2 and 3 you know so it will maintain the copies inside you know okay every zone you know so that can save you from data center level failure so your data is not uh, you know uh, okay uh, unavailable okay so if your data center gone down so still you can be able to you know okay get or you will be able to access your data you know from you know other you know uh, zone Okay, and in case of uh, uh, GRS, which is geo redundant, uh, you know, storage. Okay, so this will make what uh, you know uh, 
the primary copy of your data is going to you know make into you know okay locally available into one data center okay and it is going to make another copy of your data you know okay so first primary copy will be made you know into this you know uh, primary lrs okay it will work like a lrs only <clears throat> so it will keep it inside one data center and second you know the copy okay it will maintain into you know another region altogether you know so you have a concept called as region pair you know so whatever be the region you have chosen as a primary region you know so whatever be the pair region of that you know so microsoft is going to maintain your data into that uh, you know okay uh, secondary region so ultimately you know so your data six copies of your data will be you know, maintained So this is to avoid uh, any kind of a downtime or any kind of a you know okay um, service lost. Okay. Now let us uh, you know uh, wait for a short tea break. You know we'll wait for a tea break for ten minutes. Okay, and let's come back after ten minutes. You know? So maybe it's six two. You know, we'll come back in ten minutes. Six twelve. Uh, we'll start. Okay. So meanwhile, if you have any kind of a query, let me read it. Replica coming committed means. So replica means what it is going to maintain a different copies, you know. In the LRS, it is going to maintain a three copy. In ZRS, it is going to maintain. Uh, sorry, uh, uh, in GRS, you know, it is going to maintain a six copies. So three copies in the you know uh, LRS, which is locally, and another three copy will maintain in the another region, whichever be the region pair. Okay, guys. So let us wait for you know a short tea break. Okay, and we'll come back in ten minutes. Okay, six twelve.
Hello, uh, I hope you are back now. Chaitali, are you there? Thanks, thanks, Amita, for confirming. Okay, uh, so we'll discuss few concept. Okay, okay so um, blob storage, you know, okay, uh, normally uh, it is useful for you know storing your images. Okay, images, any kind of a binary file, you know, okay. Uh, any kind of a log, any kind of a you know uh, database backup you are you want to you know keep into the Azure, okay. So that kind of a data, you know, okay. You can keep in mind whatever kind of a binary data, you know, binary large object it can uh, you know uh, store into a blob storage. So while creating, you know, uh, a blob first of all obviously you have to create a storage account under that you only you know able to create a blob storage table storage file storage and queue storage you know? okay so if you're creating a blob you know uh, you need to create a container okay so container is acting as a some kind of a, you know folder you know? okay but uh, remember that uh, exam point of view you remember container you know cannot be nested you know I cannot create container within container. No? Okay. Oh, thank you so much for letting me know. Sorry. Uh, my screen was not shared. Okay. So I cannot uh, create, I said, no, I can't create a container within a container. You know? So inside a container, I have to store you know, a files and I can store a multiple files. OK, and you know that file is acting as a blob. OK. And you know, we can access normally, you know, those blob by using a URL. You know? OK, so remember that. So if you want to access, if you have you know, some kind of, a, you know, a, a library, you know, video library application. OK, and you have massive amount of data. You know, OK, so you're going to store your data ultimately, you know, OK, into the Azure and you will be, you know, your application will be accessing that data. You know, OK, there is a specific URL, you know, OK, there will be some kind of a unique URL, you know, for every you know blob you will find. OK, so using that URL, you know, OK, we will be able to access the block. You know, individual block. And it's normally uh, I can create. You know, this way, you know, the blob. OK. And. There are going to be a three. Uh, Access tire. Exam point of view. Uh, it, it is important to understand. You know? By the way, it is a meaning is hot tire. So whenever you are having, you know, a uh, very frequently, you know, uh, need of accessing that particular blob, you know, OK, so you can specify you no know, access tire of that particular, you know, uh, container as. OK hot you know which means you want to access it very frequently you know so if you have if you have you know okay uh, less frequently access data you can store that data okay in the cool time you know and uh, uh, which you which you do not want to access you know you want to rarely access, you know, okay. Like for example, your back backup data, you know, okay. 
so such data you can keep it in the archive diary no okay so there are three kinds of uh, you know access tire you are having for blob remember you know so if i you know create a blob you know so i can control you know okay so maybe um, i can keep uh, that blob for a month maybe it's in a you know a hot access tire you know so when it becomes you no know, um uh, maybe uh, you no know, uh, one month old it will automatically change the tire you know uh, to the cool okay and once you know maybe it is uh, maybe six month old it will automatically go uh, or it will automatically move into the archive tire you know so you can consider one you know example you can relate this example to any uh, you know uh, uh, ott you know uh, so netflix or amazon you know amazon prime um, so whenever a new movie gets released you know okay so you can think of that new movie will be for a specific time maybe for 15 days or 30 days they will be putting that you know okay new movie into the hot tier why because there are a lot of people who will be accessing this you know okay so you need you know the faster access okay but after maybe 30 days there will be you know a very uh, you know uh, less number of people who will be accessing them you know okay so you do not need that you know uh, performance tier as you know access tier as hot because it is more costlier to you you know so you will be automatically moving once it is 30 days old you know that will be automatically moved to the you know cold tier okay so once it is maybe a six month old you know it will be automatically taken into the archive tier so that i can control you know into the blob life cycle you know so if you want to control that you know okay you will be you know managing that you know into the blob life cycle you know a uh, object replication you should uh, understand this object replication also the need of that object replication you know uh, so example point of you uh, you understand that uh, life cycle object life cycle blob life cycle and you know replication okay so this is just creating a duplicate copy yeah okay okay uh, now am i audible properly alpesh yeah it is okay no okay okay so uh, object replication means what uh, you know uh, it is you know simple as you know just you know creating a duplicate copy of uh, you know uh, your blob or your storage account you know okay and um, Uh, one of the use case why you want to you know create a duplicate copy you know okay so so for example you know okay so you are having okay maximum or you know lot of latency okay and you want to minimize the latency okay so in that case you can go and you know uh, uh, you know Uh, replicate that object or replicate that storage account into the different region okay so you know let's take that example of a netflix only you know okay so netflix uh, you know uh, one so initially okay uh, you are placing okay the movie uh, maybe uh, i am placing you know uh, maybe regional movies whatever be the uh, i am placing okay in india region you know so this is my primary region i am keeping everything inside you know uh, the primary region which includes your uh, um, maybe bollywood movie which includes uh, your you know uh, 
or maybe south indian movies or which includes your uh, you know uh, any kind of uh, another regional movies like for example marathi movie or you know punjabi movie or gujarati movie you know like like that example you know okay so let's see so you know obviously you know south indian movie will uh, you know uh, access lot of people from south india will access it okay so if you look at the west india you know okay the latency will be you know okay will be more for the users you know okay uh, which are there you know present in the you know south india like for example chennai you know uh, or kerala or you know uh, karnataka people are accessing it you know? okay so because of the distance you know uh, that you will find a small you know okay delay in that uh, you know latency okay but whatever be the you know okay the region which is closer to you you know it is okay it is going to help you to reduce your latency if your data is closer to you you know okay so for example in this case okay so i will replicate my storage account you know from you know west india to the south india so that south india you know uh, whatever be the movies which are you know uh, related to the south indian movies i will keep inside this storage account you know so the people who are accessing that movies you know they will find you know okay now the response time will be faster the, there will be lesser latency there will be low latency okay so object replication is you know based on this concept only you know okay you want to replicate you know your storage account into another region you know okay got it okay so remember this uh, you know uh, for exam point of view okay and there is uh, one more point uh, you know uh, which is uh, called as shared access signature you know sas which is also called as sas token and there is something called as a manage key you know so these two point also you know okay um, exam point of view you know important you know? okay so as the shared access token and manage keys both are related to the access you know of your storage account access of your uh, container access of your maybe you know any kind of um, files which you are maintaining inside you know blob storage table storage or anything you know okay so what do you mean by shared access signature you know? okay so for that you know okay so i'll just uh, want to show you one thing practically okay or or just we'll just discuss it over here okay using this So let me just go and create one storage account, and then I'll show you this. Okay. So storage account name, you know, has to be you know uh, globally unique. So let's create a storage account, and I'll just uh, use this storage account only, not create a new. Sorry, Jacob. Hello, am I audible to you? Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Thanks, Nisha. yeah so i have created uh, you know a storage account and inside this storage account i want to create a new i, I want to use a uh, existing one okay so inside this if you look at you know okay i will be able to configure these things okay i will be able to configure container file share queue and table you know and if you just go into the container okay okay so you'll find uh, you know there are you know couple of containers i have created okay there is some option called as manage key okay 
Yeah, so there is option called as access key, not manage key. You have access key. So this is, you know, your access key, which is related to the, you know, access of your, you know, um, block container or any kind of a data which is available inside the storage account. Okay, so there are two access keys. Okay, so there are two access keys. So if you are having these access keys, you know, you will be able to access the entire storage account. Okay. Okay, so this is more, you know, broader access, you know, okay. So if you are having, you know, the access of these, you know, keys, key one or key two, you know, so if you are having the access of these keys, you know, so you will be you know, able to read entire storage account. You know? So whatever be the data present inside this entire storage account, that means you know, container, pile, queue, table, you know, so you will be able to access that data, you know, okay, from this storage account, you know, by using these key. Okay. But you know, there is more granular access we can provide. And that more granular access, how can we provide? By using shared, you know, uh, what's that? Shared access something, shared access signature. Okay, so using shared access signature, I can just provide more fine grained access on my, you know, storage account. You know, so there is an option called as, okay, shared access signature. You know, so you can, Customize that shared access signature. Okay. And over there, you, know, you will get that option. I don't know why it is taking so much time. Okay, so you will be able to, you know, okay, generate a SAS token, shared access signature token, okay, for this, you know, entire container, storage container, you know, for this entire storage account. You know? So you can give a fine grain access, like for example, you know, I want to, uh, you know, give access only on a blob, only on a file, only on a queue, only on a table. You know, I want to give only read permission, only write permission. You know, okay. I don't want to give delete permission, update permission. You know, so I can control all that. You know, okay, by using shared access signature. But if I give access keys, you know, so I am giving entire control. You know, as if you know, okay, I am the owner. Okay, so we will be able to access the content from this. You know, so. Sharing this access keys, you know, versus shared access signature, you know, so shared access signature is more powerful, you know, so you can control, you know, what uh, permission you can give. You know? So, like for example, I can give that, uh, you know, shared access signature, you know, on a specific container also. Okay. I can give that shared access signature on a specific, um, you know, um, uh, the blob also. Okay. So, for example, I'm creating one container. Okay. So, maybe I'm just using images. Okay. And you can see, you know, the access level for this container. So, I want to keep that access level as container. So, uh, anybody can, you know, able to access. Uh, whatever be the images will be putting inside this, you know, so everybody can able to access that images. You know? So let me go inside this container. Okay, and you know, let me just upload, you know, any image in in this container. Okay, so by clicking on this upload button, I I'll, I'll be able to upload the image. And let me just go in my images folder okay and i will just upload all the images so 
can just click on upload once again. If there is a problem in my internet connection, that's why it is taking so much time. They just give me, uh, you know, one or two minutes, I'll just reconnect. Yes, give me two minutes. I'll just reconnect. Uh, I'll just disconnect uh, for some time and I'll just reconnect once again. Hello. Hello. Ah, yes. So, uh, because of yes, the sir, bad think, network, you know, yeah. Yeah. got disconnected. Okay. So, I'm sharing my screen. Uh, answer to once it is up, I uh, can open it.
Okay, uh, so over here. I'll browse the files. Put this images. And I'll upload these images. So once you upload these images over here, you know, you will see it. OK. And if I just go and you know, uh, check for this image. OK, and if I take the URL of this you know, image. OK, so I will be. Able to access that image. OK, so if I give this uh, image uh, URL to you, you also will be able to access this image because you know um, we are not having any restriction on this. You know? OK. Because I have just uh, provided access tire as you know, I've just provided as you know, anyone can access this. OK. But if I'm changing this access level, you know, OK. And rather than making is that anonymous read, OK, I'm just making it as private. So if I'm just making it as a private, you know, OK, so once you know, OK, it become a private, you know, uh, after that, you know, you won't be able to you know, access it uh, you know, anonymously. So if you just try it now, OK, so you won't be able to access this image. OK, because you are not having that access. So I can provide that access, you know, OK, by using access key or by using SAS token. You know, so most appropriate, most granular level access, if you want to give, you know, we can use a SAS token. So we can generate, okay, SAS token. So you can see this at the blob level, we can generate a SAS token. At the container level, I can generate the SAS token. Or at the storage account level, we can generate a SAS token. So once you generate, you know, click on that generate SAS, you know, it will take you to this. Okay. So it is going to use ultimately, you know, the keys. Okay. So there are two access key, access key one and key two. You know, okay. So we are using what, uh, you know, key one. Okay. So that, you know, blob will be accessed from this to this. OK, so you are having only one day of access. You know, if you look at, uh, you know, day after tomorrow, you will not see you know, this access. You know? OK, but I can control this also. You know? So I can just go and give this maybe. OK. One month you know, access. The 16th. OK, and. So you want, you know, uh, HTTP or HTTPS, you know, so I want only HTTPS, you know, okay. And I can generate a token by clicking on this, you know, generate SAS token. And once you generate, you know, a SAS token, you know, uh, so you'll have to take this URL, okay. And using this URL, you know, okay, so you will be able to access that. No, you want access that block. OK. So SAS token is related to the access of the you know blobs access of your storage account. You know, it is more you know fine grained you know, access. You no, know, rather than you know giving the access on. Um, you know, on rather than giving the access on you know entire uh, access key. OK, so which mean. You will give the access of your entire storage account. Yeah. So as of now, I'm just using what which key key one. You know, I'm just using to generate a you know SAS token. Okay, but if I just go and you know uh, modify that uh, you know key one. Okay, so if I just come back, 
and if I go to that storage account once again, So I click on this storage account. OK, and if I come to this. Um, access key, can you see this access key? If I hit on this access key. You know, so I'm having this you know, key one. You no, know, and if you change this key one. OK. Then you will have to regenerate that SAS token. OK, so I've changed this key one. I've rerouted you know, that key one. You know? So once I change that key one, you know, OK, so it will have some kind of an impact you know, on accessing this. Okay. That may be getting loaded from the caching only. Let me generate both of the key. Which key I have used. OK, so once I you know, re. Generate that both key, both access key, you know. <clears throat> your this will be dependent on that. I believe that was uh, dependent on key two. <clears throat> you know, so once you regenerate, you know you you will see you know um, that access related problem. <clears throat> so exam point of view, which is important now. Huh? <clears throat> OK. <clears throat> Sorry. So once you uh, once you do this, OK. Then exam point of view one uh, you know, uh, storage. So for example, uh, you are having. <coughs> sorry. You know, file share, you can create a file share. You know, OK, and you will be able to access that file share, you know, just like a shared drive within your computer. You know, so. And setting up that shared drive, it's not. Uh, it's not a you know, uh, it's not uh, involved uh, any uh, large setup, so I can just click on this file share. You now I can just provide the name of my file share, so I can just go and give. Images as the name of my file share. It should have all lowercase name images. OK. And let's go and create that images. And once you create the images, OK, let's go and. OK, let's go and keep you know, some images into this uh, you know, folder. OK. OK, so in this particular drive, so that images will be acting as a drive. You know? OK, so in that drive I will be creating. Maybe I can create a folder. OK, so maybe. Uh, OK. So inside this folder, if I wish to create one more directory, no, we can just go and create one more di directory. OK, but uh, you know that is not applicable for the you know container. Container, you know, it's a flat container. You can say, you know, it cannot be nested. You know, OK, so within the container I can keep many blobs. OK, but the file share, you know, it is just going to work as a, you know, a normal explorer. So I will keep uh, you know one folder under that folder. I may keep different file, you know, another folder also. 
<coughs> okay. Maybe I'll just go and keep. Okay, and inside this, I want to upload those images. So I'll just upload you know, these images which are available. Okay, so if I upload all these images, I will find that images over here. And okay, so once you go and upload these images, <coughs> Come back to the uh, file share. You know, and this file share and if you want to create, you know, something called as a shared drive, you know, then you will have to connect this. You know? So by using that URL, you can't access the images, you know, which are present inside, you know, uh, uh, the file share. The file share data, you know, OK, for accessing the file share data, you have to connect. OK, so that will provide you, you know, OK. So what kind of a drive it will be created? You know, so. The purpose of the file share, OK, is going to create ultimately a shared drive, some kind of a shared drive and inside that shared drive, you know, you will find all these, you know, uh, folder, all these files. You know, OK, and I can choose what drive I want, you know, so I want it as a Z drive, you know, OK, and ultimately you have to execute you know this command you know okay so this powershell command you will have to execute okay but if you are executing this on your you know uh, corporate machine you know it may not work because car corporate machine your company machine has a lot of restriction but if i'm executing it on my laptop or it on my you know uh, uh, maybe on virtual machine you know it should work okay so let me not try on my laptop. Let me just work on my virtual machine. You know, so I'll be using my virtual machine. So let me just go and connect to one of the virtual machine. So I'll just go and take a RTP. OK, so I'll start that virtual machine first. And once the machine is started, you know, I'll take a RTP. You know, once I take an you know, RDP, I will be able to connect uh, to that VM. OK, so meanwhile it is getting, you know, created. Let me just. Just execute this. You know, in the PowerShell window, you can open a command prompt or you can open the PowerShell window, but before executing, you know, uh, let me just show you. I am having currently. Uh, you know, two drive. C drive and D drive, you know, OK, so this will just go and create. If you go and execute this. Okay. OK, so this is blocking the connection from, from my, uh, you know, ISP internet service provider. So on this port number, it is blocking that connection. Let me try that on my VM. Let's see whether it is. Creating in the you know, virtual machine or not. So let's connect to that virtual machine. OK, let's use another account.
<coughs> yeah, you can uh, treat this as a network drive, you know, and uh, you, you know, you will be creating an on-premise network drive, you know, who will be used, you know, it will be used as a shared drive uh, amongst all the people. Okay, so I'm just uh, you know, creating that shared drive only. You know? So if I just go and show you first. Okay, so on this virtual machine we are having. Okay. Only one primary drive and one uh, temporary drive. Okay, and if you just go and execute. Okay, so PowerShell window. So let me just be honest up aside and let me run as an administrator. I'm just copying that command. Yeah, it got connected, uh, no? Okay, successfully. Now you can see you no know, that drive has created. You no, know, and if you just look at you know inside this drive, you know, okay, the folder which we have created uh, will will be able to see. You can see it. Okay, and if you upload one you know image over here, so for example, you are uploading an image. So let me just find out one image. There is no image present, so you can just go and create one image. I'll just save it. Let me just save it over here on the desktop. So once I save it in the desktop, once I copy this over here in the you know image drive, you know it will be uh, instantly sent up in the storage account. You know, into that file share. Now, if you go back into your file share and if you check, you know, okay, if that uh, available in the file share or not, you will see that uh, you know data. Okay, so if you just look at certification images, you know, okay, this image which you have uploaded, you know, uh, from your machine. Okay, so just you know to just go and copy. Uh, the image into that folder, so it will be maintained, you know, okay, uh, on the you know this file share, okay, but uh, everybody will will be able to use that, you know, that file share, you know. This is simple but uh, you know powerful, you know, uh, way of handling this file share. Okay, what is it?
Tananjay is asking any file present in the VM can be locally accessible through network IP. Uh, so how are you saying? Not through the container then. accessible to the network. Uh, it is not clear to me uh, question. I'm not able to understand your question, Dhaninja. Okay, uh, but over here, you know, like this, you will be able to do it. Uh, okay. And if I just go and close it. Okay, and I'll just go to the slides. Okay, and you know, let's discuss, uh, you know, uh, whatever be the remaining time you know, related to the uh, network you know, concept. Few uh, concepts we will be discussing related to the network. Okay, uh, so you will find uh, a question uh, which is related to the virtual network. You know, okay, uh, then uh, the questions which are related to the subnet. You know, okay, uh, maybe accessing you know uh, resources between virtual network between subnet. You know, uh, you will find the questions which are related to the load balancer. You know, okay. There are two types of load balancer, public load balancer and you know private load balancer. The related to the you know the IP address. You know, there are two uh, types of IP address: standard IP address, basic IP address. There are two types of uh, you know uh, uh, load balancer. You know okay is also uh, we are having public and you know uh, that. Uh, private but uh, you know again that sqe is different uh, we are having standard and again basic you know then you will find a question on the firewall you know? okay so firewall uh, you know okay again uh, you will find the question on the uh, maybe on the um, uh, a vpn connectivity you know okay vpn gateway you know okay so this is uh, you know uh, these are the most, uh, you know, okay, frequently asked uh, questions. You know, you will get the, you know, Sir. questions from these areas. Hello. Hello. Sir, uh, when we are taking the container, no container files, so we are accessing through uh, that uh, command, and we are getting through the network, no. Which command, sir? Uh, some uh, po yeah. power cell. Uh, uh -huh. okay. It, no? okay. Yes. From there we got some access and we uh, using this uh, image file and we can do FTP. But mm -hmm. when we are having the VMs, no, we have created some VM and we have taken the uh, RDP session. Mm -hmm. So within the VM, if we are having any file and we want to locally access uh, through our uh, uh, local laptop, so how we can configure that? So uh, you can configure that, but uh, you know uh, that there are you know a uh, lot of restriction over there. Uh, by yeah, default, it is yeah. not accessible. Okay. okay. But of course, that also can be done. You know. Okay. But uh, you have to be a network expert. You know, in that. You know? So you have to enable those. Uh, you know, network drives. No, if we will enable port twenty one, then we can take FTP of uh, that things. No, VM uh, part. Ha. Huh. Yes. So uh, by this we can use. 
sir you are taking the container files to your uh, local uh, network no but i want to take the files stored in uh, vms means uh, whatever vms we are creating no uh, it is having some files there i want to access the file directly to my local drive local uh, local uh, system network so how we should do that um means uh, that the command which we have executed on the virtual machine you want to execute it on our local drive yeah no you have uh, executed that command for container uh, storage no no i have executed that command for uh, uh, file storage file storage that file storage is located in vm uh, vm1 no file storage uh, was located in the azure azure no but uh, i just want to Take that, like VM zero one is there. One uh, VM is there. In VM there is some drives. No, in that drive I am having some file. I want to uh, take that file to my local drive or add it uh, some different VM or my uh, another other another network VM. So how I can take the FTP there? Uh, so uh, uh, you can configure that you know uh, port uh, number. What is the port number you said uh, for FTP? I think port twenty one. We we have to enable to take this thing. Ah, uh, port twenty one. Uh, you are saying it is uh, for. Uh, so uh, let me just go and uh, VM one. We'll just try out. Huh? So we have to enable the NST rule. Okay, so, and let me just add inbound rule. Let me see whether there is something called as a FTP or not. Yes, there is FTP port twenty one. I'm saying no, just allowed. Okay. Once the rule is created, uh, we'll have to just. Uh, Wait for maybe one one minute or so. Okay, and uh, this is the IP address. And how do you generally, you know, uh, like like this only you will be accessing, you know, that FTP, no. Yes, what is, is that uh, 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 syntax? C drive. What's that? Uh, have to uh, type. Uh, I think dollar sign. Dollar sign with. Yeah, uh, dollar uh, sign and C drive. No. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. C drive is the drive. C drive is a drive only. Sir, once you can you try that RDP session and after uh, copying any file, you can directly paste to your local uh, uh, drive. No, but uh, the file no, is going or not? Uh, once we are, you know, uh, 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 enable that FTP protocol. Also, we'll have to block that Windows firewall. You know, we'll have to disable that Windows firewall. Otherwise, uh, you know, that firewall will be blocking your, you know, uh, that FTP request. Uh, what are you saying, uh, sir? Can you try any file? That image file is there on no? desktop. Just uh, copy yeah. that file and uh, paste in your desktop, local desktop. Yeah. It is going there or not? So 
should I copy this in my desktop? Uh, in yeah, my local yeah. machine desktop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, and what to do? Co paste it. It's coming or not? That is going to come with. That is not having any uh, restriction. It is coming. So if it is coming uh, like this, so it means FTP is working, no? No. So uh, uh, if FTP is working, so first of all, you will be uh, enabling that rule. You know, and secondly, I believe uh, you require um, to you know uh, turn off that firewall setting. Uh, there should be so NTP or network, some network setting we should do. Take. So firewall is you know uh, turn on. So let me just turn off that firewall. So after we turn off that firewall, we'll try whether it is working or not. Yeah, so it is having a problem this. I think the it's... syntax we are uh, typing is incorrect, I think. What is colon. the syntax? The syntax should be the... C e colon, yeah. Uh, after C, no, uh, you can, yeah, that dollar, uh, which can uh, prefix C a, dollar, yeah. okay. C dollar, like uh, then one. colon, colon also we can uh, first try this one and then we'll try with the colon. Yeah, No, it is not working. Maybe syntax, uh, you know, wrong. Can you just uh, give me correct syntax for this? Uh, okay, sir. Let me search. Anyone, uh, anyone in team can uh, suggest if they know the syntax, correct syntax. Where to put the colon? Where to put the dollar? Yeah, Nijam is saying something. SMB protocol. Uh, it's best approach to enable SMB protocol. Yes. So file share is using that SMB protocol only. It is uh, you know, uh, with the help of SMB protocol only you are enabling that file share. And then it is using internally, you know, that SMB protocol. Okay. Uh, Tananjay, let's move ahead there. You know, okay, so sir. We are not having, you know, uh, enough time. Okay, sir. Okay. Uh, but, you know, uh, you know, I... I will just go and you know look out uh, your problem and you know you just uh, put your email ID uh, in in the oh, chat sir, box. Sir, what about the public reply. IP? Sir, uh, when you have taken the uh, public IP, no, you have taken NIC public IP, no? Ah, that I have taken uh, public IP, public IP of a VM I have taken. So look at this. This is the public IP of VM I have yeah. taken. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I'm using uh, like this only. Okay. C dollar like this only, no? Or mm -hmm. uh, let me use Z so without dollar. without any uh, drive, you can uh, access. It will not show. No? Okay, sir. We can check in the different uh, sessions and all. Uh, you can continue okay. the work. Nice. Okay, so let's um, let's discuss you know okay uh, some of the components which are related to the you know uh, the networking. 
so you know in short we'll discuss first you know what is ip address you know there are two kinds of ip address you know uh, you are having ip v4 okay so this is the ip address okay uh, which is uh, help us to uniquely identify a machine within the you know uh, within the network okay okay so there are two types of ip address you know which can be used uh, for communication you know okay but uh, nowadays you know okay uh, currently people are using only ipv4 but in future you know okay we'll have to use ipv6 okay uh because of you know okay uh, ipv4 you know can produce uh, uh, around 4 billions of unique ip addresses okay and uh, you know nowadays you know every person is having a multiple you know devices you know organization are having a uh, thousands of you know devices thousands of mobile devices thousands of uh, you know uh, uh, machines ip address you know, required for that okay so 4 billion ip address you no know, are not enough okay so to solve that challenge you know okay uh, you know people have come up you know with the concept of ipv6 you know so in that uh, you know you can generate a trillions of ip address you know okay so currently ipv4 you know okay has two types of ip address you know one is private ip and one is public ip okay both if you look at you know okay it is having four you know um, octet okay uh, every octet uh, you know uh, will start from 0 to 255 you know okay so this is the you know the format of a ip address let me just go and go to the next one you know okay so this is the you know binary format you know of your this ip address okay and if you if you just uh, you know look at this octet you no know, okay so if you just uh, uh, calculate the sum of you know these numbers you know okay you will get 255 okay so the number will start from 255 you know and it is zero okay so your computer will understand the ip address in this particular way in this uh, you know manner your computer will understand the ip address but human cannot understand this way you know okay so human readable form is this okay you know uh, so it can generate as i said you know uh, the trillions of uh, you know uh, maybe ip addresses in ipv6 so ipv6 is a 128 bit uh, long you know uh, ip address okay so where you are going to have you know eight you know bit like this okay so which is going to contain a hexadecimal you know digits okay and which can produce you know around you know 340 you know um, maybe undecilient addresses you know so which can which can come to this okay so if i just go and you know okay translate in you know uh, normal english you know so it is come to 340 trillion 3 tri three time trillion you know okay so that many unique ip addresses it can generate okay so because we are having a shortage of a public ip addresses you know okay in ipv4 you know now we are using you know concept of a private ip and you know public ip you know so normally when you are uh, we are accessing a internet you know we will be using a public ip okay and you know normally when you know uh, you are accessing within the network you know within the network you want to access anything you know okay then you can use a private 
you know, IP for that took place. Okay. So let's come to the point, uh, you know, okay, where exam point of view important. So these are the points which which will not ask during the exam. So let's jump to the point, you know, okay, where you know, your exam point of view, you know, necessary. So these are the point, uh, you know, virtual network and submit, you know, okay. These are important points for, you know, your exam point of view. So you should understand what is virtual network. Okay, so virtual network is kind of a network only, you know, just like, you know, on-premise network, you know, okay, that we are creating a virtual, you know, so virtual network, you know, created, okay, virtually, and within that virtual network, I can place different, uh, you know, um, resources. Okay, so I can place different resources within the, you know, virtual network. Okay, so by default, uh, you know, virtual network uh, maybe um, contain one subnet, you know. So if you are having a multiple subnet, you know, uh, between a subnet, uh, you will be able to access, you know, the resources within the network, you know. So within the network, you will be, you know, having access to all the, you know, uh, network resources. Okay, but you know, if you are trying to access the resource which is available inside, you know, another, you know, virtual network, you know, by default, you know, that is not, you know, accessible because virtual network, you know, is isolated from each other, you know. So if you want to, you know, access the resource which is available inside another virtual network, you know, okay, then you need to establish some kind of a connection. You know, so you need to establish, you know, some kind of a connection. Okay, and that connection is normally called as, you know, okay, the pairing. Okay, so you need, you know, okay, a pairing between a virtual network that is called as, you know, VNet pairing. So if you are having that VNet pairing, you know, okay, then you will be able to, you know, connect to the, you know, uh, different network resources. Okay. So let me just show you quickly, you know, okay, a demo. So how can we create, you know, okay, VNet pairing? So if I just go to this and I am just having, Okay, so this virtual machine, okay, which is part of, okay, uh, maybe, okay, so this network. AZ104 hyphen VNet, that is the you know network um, you are having. Okay. And if I just go and you know try and see this VM. Okay. So which is present in a different you know, network. You no. Know? So by default, you know, uh, this VM you know, cannot you know, give a request to this field. Okay, so I need to have some kind of a, you know, uh, some kind of a connectivity. Okay, I need to have some, you know, kind of a connectivity. Okay, so since, you know, this is both these resources are present inside a virtual network, you know, okay, so we can, you know, apply one concept called as virtual network pairing. Okay, so once you apply that virtual network pairing, you know, you will be able to access, you know, okay, these, okay, uh, these machines. Okay, so let's go and create. Okay, so I, I want to show you. Okay, that custom extension also, no? Okay. So for that purpose, I will just go and create a separate virtual machine. 
Okay, so I'm putting uh, that virtual machine in uh, VM VMRG resource group. Uh, so this is the name of my virtual machine. Let me pick up this virtual machine image. Okay, let's put. I'm keeping this uh, 3389 open and I want to uh, keep open you know, AT port number. You know, so I'll just keep it open AT port number and I'll just go and see. OK, uh, what is my virtual network? So this is VMRG VNet. So that is my virtual network. OK, so. So I'm putting it inside, uh, you know, OK, region East US, you know, and if you just look at there is one section called as advanced, you know. <clears throat> and in the advanced section, you know, there is, you know, uh, one section called as extension. <clears throat> and we'll be clicking on this, you know, uh, extension. OK, and from here, whatever be the required extension, you know, you require to you know install for your virtual machine. You can just go and, you know, install that. So I'll just go and install custom script extension. So I want to install this custom script extension. So uh, by using this, I can just go and you know uh, write uh, any kind of a PowerShell uh, command and I can install any software. So if I just go and install this, you know, custom script. I just say next. OK, and. Uh, then you will have to you know, uh, select the. Uh, you know, the file, you know, uh, which has a custom script. OK, and that file should be present inside your content. You know, it should be present within the content. OK. OK, so file required to be present within the content. So let me just go and create, you know. OK. So it will just browse you to the you know, uh, storage container, storage account. You know? Let me just go and use. My, my existing storage account or let me create a new storage account. OK, so maybe I'm saying. This is the name whether it is available or not. Yes, it is. No, this is not available. Yes, so I'm going to use what. Uh, resource group. Okay. I'll say. Create. I'll go inside this. I'll create a container. I'll name the container as Okay, I set the access level as uh, container so that anybody can have access it. Okay. And within this, I would like to upload 
the file you know okay and the file which i am uploading that is present on my drive and this is the file you know uh, which i am going to upload it today okay so which is having you know a command to um, install the iis server this is a powershell command and this is by default creating one uh, file called as home.html okay under uh, you know this particular folder inet pub and www root you know that folder you know? okay so i will be able to access you know uh, this home page uh, by giving a ip address you know uh, slash you know the uh, the page name home.html you know okay and we'll get the output this output you know because this will be the content of you know this html file you know so we are setting that content by using this command you know? and i want to you know you know have this uh, you know uh, home.html file and uh, i server you know as a part of this so we will be having these two command okay in this html uh, in this particular powershell file ps1 file and i'll be uploading that you know powershell file okay and once you upload that powershell file you know so you will be executing that powershell file you know as a part of a custom script extension okay so we will be you know using this powershell file okay to be executed by whom you know by the custom script extension so this custom script extension will execute you know this file you know during creation of your vm okay so let's go and click on this create okay so your custom script you see okay and once you you know just create okay this virtual machine okay so once you say create the virtual machine okay so this virtual machine will be created okay so during this time you know okay let's create uh, go and have one more virtual machine and i'll just go and place similar kind of a setup i just put it inside this resource group vm04 as a name let me put this those image okay let me put password also okay and uh, let me just verify my vnet okay so this is you know going to use what same vnet okay but i don't want that uh, same vnet for this i'll just go and create another vnet or i'll just verify what is the vnet it is using so i want to use uh, you know different vnet you no know? i'm not sure whether this is the vnet uh, which is used by the vm3 so i'll just go and create uh, another vnet okay and i'm using this address space you know um, by the way uh, this address space uh, so this is the address space uh, so uh, slash 16 means what uh, this is basically uh, is 
call as a CIDR notation. You know, uh, so earlier, uh, you know, uh, if you use uh, the IP address, uh, the IP address was categorized into class A, class B, class C. You know, uh, like that. Uh, you know, the IP address ranges will be categorized. Okay. So if you use this slash notation, no, you know, okay, that means uh, your IP address will be, you know, uh, use like a class class, uh, you know, uh, Okay, so if you just use what slash 16, uh, which means uh, uh, first two will be acting as your network uh, you know, address and last two, you know, octet. You know, out of this four octet, first two octet will be acting as a your uh, network address, and last two octet will be acting as a your host address. You know, and out of that, you know, okay, so you will get what this many number of uh, unique host IP address, sixty five thousand five hundred and thirty six. Okay, but uh, out of that, you know, uh, five will be reserved. You know by the uh, Azure. Okay, so you can see. You know, okay, if you just use maybe twenty four. You know, okay, you will get two fifty six. Out of two fifty six, you know, five will be reserved by the Azure. You know, that means effectively you will get two fifty one. Uh, you know, IP addresses. So first four IP address and last IP address will will be reserved. You know, by the Azure. Okay. So if you just go and use what slash 30, you know, okay, you can see this. So four IP address. Okay. So which means, you know, okay, Azure wants five IP address at least, you know. So first four and, you know, uh, last. Okay. So this is not a valid, you know, uh, range. Okay. So max to max, you can use, you know, slash 29. You know, okay. Okay. So remember this, you know, uh, uh, you will, you know, receive one uh, question on this also. Okay. So I'll just go and keep, uh, you know, okay, maybe as 24. Okay. And let me just go and make changes over here because I might be using what, uh, you know, 10 dot four, you know, for that another VNet also. Okay. So I'll just say OK. OK, and over here I'm not having a subnet, so I'll just go and create a subnet. One. So I'll just go and give that uh, you know, range of whatever be the address range of my VNet, I'll just provide that address range to the you know, uh, subnet also. Okay, so I'll just create it. Okay. And in this, I'll not go and add a custom script extension because uh, you know, I will be accessing uh, uh, the server uh, by using this VM, you know, okay. The server which is having uh, on that third virtual machine. You know? So I'll just create a virtual machine. This virtual machine, I will use it as a client. Okay. And this virtual machine, okay, where I'm having um, the IS server installed, you know, that virtual machine I will be accessing from this virtual machine. Okay. And, uh, you know, you just remember, you know, these virtual machine are the part of my, you know, uh, different VNet. Just give me one minute, guys.
So it is uh, creating, still creating that uh, VM. Okay. Yeah, the ninja, we, we can try that huh? after this. Okay, so my VM4 is ready. So let me just go and take a RDP. Okay, meanwhile, my this VM is still creating. Okay, so let me just explain what we are doing. Okay, so we have one VM. Okay, present in the virtual network. We have another virtual network. Okay, so this is maybe a virtual network one. And you have another virtual network. Two. Okay. In this virtual network, you are having, you know, uh, of course, one subnet. Okay. So you are having a subnet over here also, you know, and you are having a machine. Here you are having virtual machine. Okay. And here also you are having a virtual machine. So obviously by using you know uh, a public IP, you, know, you will be able to access uh, you know uh, this virtual machine where I'm having the IIS server installed. Obviously I can access it uh, by using a public IP. But what if you know my public IP is not associated with this? Okay. I want to access this virtual machine and effectively uh, maybe the IIS server which is present on my you know virtual machine and maybe that foam.html which is present inside my you know, VM by using a private IP. So can you do this by you know using a private IP? So answer is no. No, you can't you know, uh, send a request by using a private IP because these two you know, uh, resources are present inside two different uh, virtual networks. You know, and in order to you know establish that connection, you know, you need to establish that pairing. Okay, so we need to have that pairing enabled. Okay, so we need to we need pairing should be enabled, and once you enable that pairing, you know, you will be you know able to access. You know this resource which is present inside another vnet by using a private ip okay from this vnet you know an exam point of view you remember you know uh, okay you will get uh, you know couple of questions on on this particular scenario okay related to the vnet vnet and vnet pairing okay so let me just go and get the RDP. I don't need you know, RDP of this, so I'll just go and 
check what is the you no know, ip you know. so this is the public ip you know. this is i am using what public ip you know. so from the you know by using a public ip we can access uh, the server okay from anywhere you know from my local laptop okay or from you know any other virtual machine you know? so for example if you just go and say home.html okay so you should be able to see you know this output okay you know, which we have set uh, you know uh, during our custom script uh, extension okay so this you know you can say okay from that vm also you know okay why because you are accessing the public ip and public ip is you know accessible from anywhere in as long as you are having access to internet okay so as long as you are ha having access to internet you know you can access this from anywhere okay but you know can you access okay this vm okay by using its private ip you know so what is the private ip you know so private ip for this vm is you know this 10. Dot 2.0.5 you know? so this is the private ip you know? and using this private ip you know, uh, of course i can't go and access this you know, server okay i can't you know go and access that page which is present on the server okay and the reason why because you know okay there is that you know resources you now this virtual machine is present inside different vnet and you know okay uh, the machine which you are trying to access which is present inside different vnet so you cannot access you know the resources by using their private ip if they are not inside a you know same virtual network or there is no you know connection between you know two virtual network you, know, you cannot access you know and let me just go and quickly set up that uh, you know okay uh, the pairing so for that you know, i need to go either on vnet3 or vnet4 so let me go into the vnet sorry vm03 and let me just go and find out what is the vnet we are using so we are using vnet you no know, rg so this is the vnet so let's go inside that vnet okay and there is a, you know something called as a pairing option so we find some option called as pairing you know you have to click on this pairing option okay so that will give you one single screen okay where you have to add a pairing you know? so so this is maybe connecting vm03 okay to vm04 okay so all the connection will be allowed okay. and so you require from 04 okay to 03 you know so bidirectional setting you have to you know okay do so you are setting it this for vnet uh, you know rg so which is associated for vnet uh, vm03 you know but what is other side you know vnet so we will have to select this is the vnet which we have created okay inside this vnet uh, my virtual machine 4 is present so once i you know establish this pairing okay once my pairing is successful you know okay so can you see this presenting you know so in uh, 
just a minute uh, you will get uh, you know uh, this status will be updated as be connected or updated you know? and once i see that you know you will yeah, say connected and once you see this status as connected you, know, you will be able to access okay so you know, this okay uh, you will be able to access this particular you know, page so A pairing is successful. Let me just refresh once again. No, it doesn't require HTTPS. It can be accessible uh, without using HTTPS because we have not configured it uh, with, for the HTTPS. Let me just go and close this. We I'm deleting the passion and we and just do that step. Point is I'm picking the IP address correct now. Should pick the IP address of DM03. Yeah, okay. Uh, on this VM zero three. Just what is the IP address of VM zero four? The separate. So it should not have confusion. So let me just go and figure out what is the. So 
V net zero four is the actual network for this. And for VM zero three, VM RG V net that is the virtual network. And if you look at this VM zero three. It is connected with VNU03. Yes. Yeah, I should work. Uh, no. So maybe it is taking some time. But it will work. Maybe for updating, you know, it is taking some time. Okay. But once the pairing is uh, you know established, then uh, you know you you should be able to access you know the page like this. Okay. And uh, this is by using a public IP address. I can access it from anywhere, you know. Okay. But once the you know pairing is established, you will be able to communicate, uh, you know, okay, it by using a private IP address, but only from uh, you know the machine which is present, you know, uh, which is present within the virtual network or where you have established the you know pairing. No, it is. Uh, I have set up it, uh, you know, bidirectional only. You know, Dhananjay. If you look at this, you know, so this is having VNet zero four. If you look at the pairing, you know, it is connected. You know? so from zero four, it is connected to VMRG VNet. That is. The V net of this. Okay. So this is connected to VM. Oh, sorry, V net 04. This is connected to the VM RG. So both sides it is connected. Okay. And you know it will work, but we'll have to give some time to this. So maybe for updating it is going to take you know, some time, so, okay. but it should work. Okay, so you know, uh, once you you know see that pairing, the next important you know uh, a point which is load balancer. Uh, once you see that concept of a load balancer, you know, okay. Uh, the next important point is uh, uh, you can go through that um, uh, VNet, you know. So there is different types of uh, you know, VNet connection or uh, sorry, not VNet, VPN connection, you know. So VPN, uh, which means if you want to connect your machine, to your you know organization you know machine or to the uh, uh, vnet then you have to establish one you know okay one uh, you know uh, type of a v vpn okay that is point to site you know so this is point to site so when your computer wants to connect to the on premise network or you know the network which is present on the Azure, then you can establish that connection by using, you know, okay, 
uh, VPN by using type the point to psych. Okay, and when you are having you know two different uh, you know uh, network or two you know you want to access uh, your on-premise site you know uh, to the you know Azure virtual network, then you can connect it by using you know site to site. You know there are two important uh, you know points which you should remember. You know exam point of view, point to site, which means you know you want to come you know connect your machine to the you know uh, the network okay and side to side means you know on premise network can be connected to the you know uh, the azure network so that you know point you, know, you should remember okay related to the virtual network and uh, you know generally you know conceptually you know uh, it will ask related to the uh, Express route, you know, because it is uh, you know, a, a very expensive service, you know, uh, which is uh, very difficult to implement. Okay. So normal organization cannot you know implement express route. You know. So express route, uh, you know, okay, is the uh, is the um, maybe you can provide a dedicated uh, you know connection, dedicated uh, you know uh, connection to the to the virtual network which is present in the in the region to your you know on premise network you know so if you are having that dedicated uh, network connection then only it is possible to you know establish uh, you know express route so which is most probably will be useful for only for mission you know critical projects okay so That's it, uh, you know, uh, from my side. Let me just go and try it once again. So we'll be stopping over here, guys. Okay, and said uh, from my side. Okay, thank you so much, Makran sir. Uh, guys, I have shared the learning achievement batch in the chat box. So just follow the steps and redeem it. Also, I have shared the feedback form in the chat box. So before winding up, make sure you fill out the feedback form. Share your feedback on that feedback form. Hello, you. My audible guys. Hello. Am I audible guys? Hello. Yes, yeah, sir. Yeah. Ah, yes, yes. Chaitali, uh, you know, I have done uh, from my side. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, can... I got it. Yes, yes. Thank you. Guys, please check the links in the chat box. I have shared the sh uh, study material link for AZ104. Then I have shared the learning achievement batch link and steps for the same in the chat box. As well as I have shared the feedback form link in the chat box. So please check with it. No. Yeah. Pick up the No. Pick up the Yeah. Papa, put it on me. It's okay. Huh? Okay. 
Tchau.